Hey everybody, welcome to the seventh and final installment in our series, The Scientific Principles of Weightlifting. This is the principle of individual differences. The principles apply to everybody the same. The amount to which those principles affect each person is different. So this is the lowest priority of all of the principles, but it oftentimes receives the most attention. Okay, Training changes by degree, not by type, meaning that the amount of training you do or the magnitude of that training is going to be different for each person. Not that uh, one person is going to do a very dramatically different kind of training. Uh, a good example of this speak, all weightlifters are going to do snatch, clean and jerk, squats to some degree. Uh, not because you're a big person or a little person or you're Bulgarian or you're Chinese that your training is dramatically different. Nobody is going to do you know, trampoline backflips as a way to train for weightlifting. The differences between people, the inter-individual differences, meaning the difference between you and I, uh, manifest themselves in different places. So the size of a lifter. Larger lifters are going to do less training. They're going to need less volume. They're going to do less of those things than a smaller lifter. Strength. Stronger lifters are going to be able to do less training overall because the absolute weight they lift is larger. Okay. Snatching 210 kilos is a lot harder and more difficult to recover from than snatching 100 kilos. Gender. Men and women are going to respond to training differently. Women generally can tolerate more training, more volume, at a higher intensity, closer, closer to their absolute value, the absolute one rep max. Men are going to be on the opposite side of that. They're going to train they're going to be able to do less volume with the highest intensities because the output is going to be higher. They're lifting larger weights in, in most cases. Proximity to career peak, meaning how close are you to the actual peak of your career? How close are you to your genetic potential to the end, the highest levels you're going to achieve? The closer you are to that, the, the more it's going to affect your training, right? So you're going to do less, tolerate less volume and less training when you're closer to your career peak than if you were at the very beginning, if you're you know, six weeks into weightlifting. And then technique. So good technique versus bad technique will have a, have a big difference on how someone's training volume affects them, how much training they're able to do. Someone with very, very poor technique or less efficient technique. You know, if they have, uh, like we talk about in the weightlifting triad, really high relative bar height, meaning they're pulling the bar very, very high, but they're inefficient, they're slow to get under the weight, their time to fixation is poor. Uh, that kind of training technique, that kind of technique is gonna be difficult to maintain large volumes of training because the inefficiency and the, the lack of ability to replicate technique consistently is going to play a big role. And then lastly, lifestyle. Difference between you and I, maybe you work a 40 hour week job, maybe I don't work a 40 hour week job. You're going to have a situation where you're going to have a harder time recovering. It's going to diminish your ability to actually tolerate training. You have used up a lot of resources actually doing the job so that when you come to training, you're going to have less result. You're going to, you're going to be able to do less training because of that. The intra individual differences. This would be the difference between the you of a few years ago and the you of today. So size and weight. When you're younger, when you're smaller, you're going to be able to tolerate more training earlier in career. Those things are going to happen more as you get larger. Those things are going to be different. You're going to get, you have to reduce training volume. You're going to have a, a difficult time, maintaining the same level of training you did when you were a 12 year old kid than when you're a 30 year old man. Uh, training age, how long you've been training. If you've been training for six months versus 16 years, right? Either side of those coins, we know earlier in the training, you're gonna be able to tolerate a lot more, you're able to accomplish a lot more, different, different things are necessary. Proximity to career peak, again, same as for the inter-relationship, you, you versus other people but now it's you versus you. So the difference from when you first started lifting to when you are now at, you know, trying to make a world team or on the world team or at the Olympics, right? Those, those factors are gonna, the magnitude of the training is gonna be different for those two scenarios. How they manifest themselves, okay? This is gonna be how these different factors actually manifest themselves in the training process. Because we know that the type of training doesn't change, just the degree to which we do it, just the amount of training changes, we can look at an example of a really small, let's say 48 kilo woman who's 15 years old, starts weightlifting, 
learning the technique, she's gonna do a tremendously large amount of volume compared to a uh, 32 year old, 105 kilo male lifter who's been competing for 17 years, okay? Their training is gonna look the same. They're gonna do snatch, clean and jerk, accessory movements, variations of those things to develop weaknesses, et cetera, et cetera, perfect technique. They still have a phasic structure. They're still overload. All those things still apply, but the woman, the small, lightweight, beginner woman is gonna do a lot more volume and her maximum recovery volume will be much, much higher than the older, near his career peak, uh, 105 kilo male. Frequency. Frequency is somewhat related to the volume in that because you're doing less volume, because the weights are larger for that same example, that 105 kilo male, uh, you're gonna have a change in the frequency. Generally, it's gonna be less frequent because those lifters are, are doing you know, larger weights, the SRA curve is much larger for those big numbers. Snatching 180 kilos for a 105 kilo male is gonna take longer to recover from than uh, a 48 kilo woman snatching 37 kilos. So the frequency is gonna be diminished for the male than for the woman. Exercise selection. So this is gonna be related a lot more to technique, but still applicable. They're still doing the same variations, variations that target weaknesses that affect uh, each person's technique in a way that's beneficial. Uh, the difference is that the exercise variations and the exercise selection for the male are probably gonna be more narrow. They've already figured out after 16, 17 years of competition and training what exercises are necessary. He's probably spent a lot of time developing and building those weaknesses up, so they're probably very few and far between. He's probably gonna spend most of his time on the most specific exercises, snatch, clean and jerk, some kind of front squat. The female still has to learn all of those technical aspects. She's gonna need a variety of exercises so she can learn the entire arsenal of different exercises uh, to prepare her to lift, uh, to, to train later. Uh, you know, she needs to know how to do all the different variations so that she can capitalize on them later and then also needs to develop the general foundation a little bit more so those exercises can be, or can sit in a place that's of higher variation than the male, right? She needs to have more time devoted to general training and learning the variety of skills. And then intensity. We look at the difference. The 48 kilo woman is younger, lighter, smaller. Intensity can be higher because the absolute value is so much smaller. If she's snatching 37 kilos as a best, she's probably gonna be able to do somewhere between 30 and 35, 34 kilos on a regular basis with very little difficulty recovering from that. The other side of that coin, we have our male 105, older, much bigger weights. The intensity trained with is probably gonna be lower because it's not as necessary to use such large weights all the time. An absolute number is gonna be higher, gonna be more taxing, gonna require more recovery. A good practical example of this, we can look at a few different examples on uh, Team Juggernaut. If we look at you know, the difference between someone like uh, Kaylin Pepito and Joanne Ada, we can see a contrast in that Kaylin is young, 24 years old, uh, she's in the beginning of her career. Her goals are going to be a little bit different. Uh, she needs to focus primarily on filling out the weight class, developing a general base of fitness and strength, and then learning the technique and refining that process uh, of discovering the exercises that really make a difference in her lifting uh, style. On the other side of that coin, we have Joanne, who's uh, towards the end of her career. She's been lifting for a very long time, over 15 years. Uh, she's going to spend most of her time honing the perfectioning of the skill. So a lot more time is devoted to the uh, classical lifts, snatch and clean and jerk. Much more focus is on the technical side of the coin because she doesn't need to develop a general strength as much. She already has accomplished that over the last several years. Another example would be an exercise selection. So the difference between Kiana Welch uh, versus Christy Brewer, right? Kiana's technique is a little bit more new. Uh, she's a little bit newer to the sport. She's been doing a little bit less time. Uh, she needs to spend more time developing relative skills, refining the process of lifting, rather than developing the finite finesse of maximum snatch and clean and jerk. She still has basic building blocks to accomplish. Uh, rather than Chrissy on her side, has been lifting a bit longer. Uh, she's got a little bit more refined skill. Her goal is to really work on those weaknesses. Uh, with the exercises, but primarily focusing on execution of the snatch and clean and jerk at a high level. Uh, and her selection of exercise is gonna be different than Kiana's. Kiana's gonna need to do exercises that affect the trajectory of the bar, the time to fixation, her speed under the weight. Whereas 
Chris, you may need to work on relative height of the bar, developing the strength of the pole, uh, and then those exercise selections should reflect that difference between the two of them. The final would be the execution of the exercise technique. So the difference between someone like Nicole Caperso's technique execution and Mike Fox's execution are, are quite dramatic. We can see that. Nicole is very tall, clearly a different shape body than Mike Fox. Uh, Mike Fox is a little bit shorter. Uh, her technique is going to rely more on the height. She pulls the bar because she has more time to get under the weight because she's traveling a, a further distance. Her moving her knee, bending her knee, squatting down is going to happen at a faster rate or it's gonna, she's gonna move further when squatting on the bar uh, than Mike Fox. Mike Fox is shorter, shorter limbs, he has to move faster. Uh, so that's where you're gonna see a difference in that. Different exercise selections and exercise execution are gonna play a role between those two because Mike Fox needs to emphasize his speed under the bar, whereas Nicole, while still needs to exercise and develop the speed under the bar, can emphasize the relative height of the bar a little bit more because she will be able to squat under if she moves so much further for so much less bend in the knee and the hip. If you guys like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe to the channel or go to jtsstrength.com for more information on the scientific principles of weightlifting.